lot. Oftentimes that goes in Zane's favor as well as he can counter score with the best of them. Rutherford never stops moving his feet. Doesn't stop attacking until the match is over. And underway, 70 kilograms, match number two. Zane Rutherford in the blue, Tyler Berger in the red. Glove and shot, high single leg for Zane Rutherford. He's trying to set the tone for this match as well. Ferocious fight there, what's gonna be the call? That's close, I think one blue on the step out. Fun exchange. Berger wants a brick. I don't think so. I don't think he does. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is gonna go well for him, but he felt like he got that step out. They're gonna take a look at it. Because I don't, I didn't see Zane's foot out or head, and maybe his hand, but that wouldn't count. As, as Berger sprawls, let's see if Zane's head hits the mat before Berger, Berger's feet do. I don't think so, but. So he's circling here. It's close. Maybe not. <laughs> Let's see, knee, knee goes out. It may, maybe it proved to be a great brick from Berger. He had to ask for it. The, the staff wasn't as sure. There's also the thought when it's close, you know, if you want to lose your brick over a one pointer, you know? Yeah. There's another. Another angle. I, I think it's a good challenge. But this this could go his way. So they are going one red. So yeah. great brick from Berger. And it was that head of Zane Rutherford that hit as Berger was floating the hips over. So Berger strikes first in both matches. A little different strike this time than uh, the takedown he got in match one. Round here, he trails 1-0. After giving up that step out. Rutherford's pace and physicality just did unrelenting. Hard clubs from both guys, trying to create an opening to get to the legs. For, for being as hard of a hand fighter as Rutherford is, he doesn't spend that much of the time in the collar tie. Right. Just it's constant just, clubs and jabs and... It's just overall pressure, you know? It's, he's moving, he's constantly on your head, Level change, faking, just a lot of movement. And you'll notice Berger's circling a lot, a, out and away from a lot of the, the pressure that Zane's presenting. There's a nice sweep single for Tyler Berger in deep. Wizard here now trying to spin around. Berger's got the takedown, extending his lead 3 0. Berger tried to get that leg bent, now drops to a low gut. And yeah, look at Zane's nose, that cut split open. It was, it was a, just a very deep gash when you look at it. And he's, he's sprung quite a leap there. Yeah, Mark. they're gonna be cleaning this mat up for a while, you gotta imagine. Get Vito back out here. <laughs> Coach Slay, see him over there in the corner with Berger, really encouraged, really fired up. He and Mark Hall trying to keep Berger's spirits high. Can't say enough good things about the job the Pennsylvania RTC is doing. Coach Slay and company doing doing an awesome job. And you look for the the benefits of that having Jordan Burroughs, Tyler Berger, Joey McKenna, David McFadden, Mark Hall all in your room. That's going to trickle into the uh, University of Pennsylvania wrestling team. Here's that, here's shot, that shot, and they Berger. just kind of they do bump heads inadvertently. And a deep sweep single, and he tries to go spin around to get that far ankle, but. Berger was ready for that counter and got the finish. And you know, an extra little break here is not the worst thing for Tyler Berger when no matter who you are, even though Berger's not a guy known to, you know, wither late matches, Zane just brings that out of him. Yeah, he really does. You know, and hearing 
Berger on the Bader show, he was pretty confident that given these weeks between U.S. Open and Final X to prepare for Zane Rutherford, that he was going to have a really good showing, that he could win, that he could beat Zane. And I'm sure he didn't have the showing he wanted in match number one. So far, so good here in match number two. They're putting tape back on Zane's head, but the blood is still just pouring out from under that tape. Man, they may have to. And I don't know if we had any shots of just how wide that gash was. It, wasn't the, it was, I mean, they were putting that, that cotton swab inside of the gash when we were looking at it. It was pretty deep. So they're, they're taping this thing every which way. They're having to get pretty creative. Yeah. Man, this is gonna be... This trainer with the toothpick. <laughs> That's the move. This trainer, this is gonna be, this, this, is, this is gonna be, this guy's gonna be presenting at a athletic training conference about this, I think, yeah. at some point. Uh, over on the women's mat, Jennifer Page makes the world team. Interesting, she, interesting thing about Jen Page, she dropped from 62 kilos to 59 at the world team trials and now on a world team. The other two athletes who changed weight classes between the US Open and World Team Trials, one match one in Final X. We saw Zahid Valencia on this mat, 92 kilos. He was 86 at the Open. He's here in Final X, one match one. And then at 68 kilos on the women's side of things, Emma Bruntel bumped up from 65, and she took match one against Forrest Molinari. So the ability to change weights after the US Open could be proving to make making uh, Team USA a little more formidable. So they're putting the Vaseline on the outside of the tape. I have not seen that before. A lot of innovation happening here tonight. Yeah. He can't see. Zane's just now realizing he can't see anything. His and, eyes uh, are completely... Show his eyes, yeah. He's, oh my gosh. He says, when I look down, I, yeah. He's like, this guy's like, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Like picky, picky. Oh my gosh! You have to choose. Do you want to stop bleeding or see? They'll they'll figure it out. Oh no, he's cutting some eye holes. <laughs> this is a this is this is a deep deep gash. Yeah, look at his eyes. It's completely closed. <laughs> Still quite a bit of blood on his face, too. Not only has this maybe been the most action-packed Final X, it's, I believe it's been the bloodiest. It's been a real bloodbath. Yeah. Yeah, and the worst part is you can't donate any of this spilled blood. They won't take it. No, they won't, they won't take it. All right, All right, he's back out. So let's roll with it. Okay, here we go. 3-0 lead for Tyler Berger, a minute 10 to go. There's a shot, another shot. Double the single for Berger, but now looking to counter is Zane Rutherford. Hard wizard there, maybe even a quarter Nelson. Yeah, yeah. quarter. Almost taking over. You see that horsepower from Zane. And no points as, as Berger was grounded. I've seen Bo Nickel messing around a lot with that quarter Nelson, seen on some videos of it. Kind of wonder if Zane could have Got the go-behind if he hadn't been so intent on the turn, but no points. Imagine Zane's going to push to get on the score. There's a double leg from space right on the edge. He's close. And Berger tried to go down to the ground. They can't let that work, right? Yeah, caution. And they're just going to go straight step out there, which I think is probably the right call. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know if the whole foot got out or not, or if it was just going to be a, a pure back and out caution in one. So no caution, just the point on the step out. Eight seconds to go. Another shot. Berger trying to steal one at the end of the period. And he's feeling every bit of that quarter to Nelson. Man, that looks brutal. And time's up. Yeah, a lot of pressure on the neck and 
see if that comes into play second period. Sometimes you get that neck pressure even from just a collar tie and that ends up affecting the stance. Guys come up out of the stance as they get more tired. It's a lot of neck pressure in those two front quarter sequences. And once again, it looks like the tape is down, obscuring his eyes. Good first period for Tyler Berger. Not only the savvy step out, but also the takedown. Yeah, great single leg, strong finish. He's gotten in a few times, and Zane's went to that front quarter and able to defend, but Zane has not been able to score off of the, the Berger shot yet. Back to the back to the medical camera. Yeah. Nobody probably more annoyed by this than Zane. Oh, he hates it. He wants to keep it going. He doesn't like to stand still for anything. Second period underway. Here we go, it's a 3-1 lead for Tyler Berger. Is they gonna try to get a takedown, get a score here, get that lead? for the first time this match. This is definitely a different match from, from the first one. It was an early takedown, yes, for Berger, but then Zane got it going almost immediately afterwards. It's been harder for Zane to, to find the legs of Tyler Berger, using his speed, working from the outside. Berger's getting better angles and now in on another shot, locked on that single leg. And near ankle pulled up for Zane Rutherford, this is a good position for Zane to score. But now they go head outside. Not bad position for Berger. Could he get exposure or a takedown here? Maybe a stalemated position, but Berger's not gonna stop working. They'll stalemate it. 3-1 lead for Tyler Berger, 2.07 to go. Really nice attempt by Berger for the exposure. If he could have hit that elbow, he would have got it. Zane able to slip it loose and no points. Head tap from Zane, left then right. Left-handed collar from Tyler Berger. You know, the officials were indicating towards Berger, and basically, I think the moment before they were gonna probably hit him for passivity, he fired off a, a single leg. Maybe he bought himself some time off the shot clock. Zane still taking him to the zone, controlling center as he has throughout, but Berger's angles not letting Zane just push him straight back as much as he was in match one. Tyler does have a verbal warning for passivity, so the next one would put him on the clock. And here, here it is. Berger going on the clock. And Berger having a word with the official I about think. Zane's hands in his face. And Berger is on the shot clock. And Berger's annoyed by the hands of the face. I poke there and he's been asking that official to make that hands to the face call a and lot, especially in the second period. The Matt chairman wants wants uh, to, them to go attention blue. We got another trainer that wants to get out here. Yeah. He's let Mr. Toothpicks hogging all the camera time. Back underway. Shot clock, we stopped that mid shot clock. Sweep single, Zane Rutherford. Looking spin around, far ankle, but he can't get it. Takedown for Zane, 3-3, three, three, plus shot clock potentially coming. Zane working for a gut wrench now. Oh, he's got a leg in. This figure four of the leg, 4-3 now. Zane in the lead. Looking like the Penn State days there with the leg in. 4-3 now, shot clock expired. 49 seconds to go, Berger adjusting the socks. This is a, a Jordan Burroughs yeah. tactic. <laughs> so a one for Berger would put him back in the lead by criteria. And there's a single leg. 
for Zane, trying to ice this one. Wizard from Tyler Berger preventing the score for the time being. 24 seconds to go, and they'll stalemate it. 23 seconds. Berger collects himself. Remember, he scored a takedown with eight seconds left in the U.S. Open Finals. Can he do it again? 18 seconds remaining. There's a shot. Look and drag. Re-attack is Zane. Good job by Berger squaring up. There's another shot from Tyler Berger. 10 seconds to go. Zane holding on to those wrists. Does not want to give Berger a clean look at his legs. Three seconds to go. One last gasp from Berger, but it's Zane Rutherford back on the world team. A 4-3 bloody win for the Zane train. It took a long time to get through with that gash, but Zane Rutherford gets it done. Limited visibility, a little blood loss. It's Zane Rutherford back on the world team. Number one ranked wrestler in the world. And former teammates, Mark Hall, Zane Rutherford shake hands and a hug there. We take a look at an exciting